Hello, everybody. My name is Rob Reinhold, and welcome to the Maverick Trading Levered ETF series. In this video, we are going to be discussing the 3X Long Semiconductor ETF. Before we just jump into it, I need to cover what an ETF is, because if anyone is watching this, they don't know what it is. This is going to make no sense. So let's quickly jump into what is an ETF. Whenever you hear the term the stock market, that really doesn't mean anything. Look, there's several different exchanges where stocks are bought and sold on a daily basis and they go up and down. There's really no way to say, hey, how are all the stocks doing? And so they created these things called indexes that you could actually track what the market was doing, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Standard & Poor's 500, the Russell 2000. And they created these as a way for someone to look at this number and say, oh, the market went up today, the market went down today, but it was just a collection of those 500 stocks that they put in there. In 1993, a firm called State Street created the first exchange traded fund called the SPY, or as was called the Spiders. This was developed to deliver the same return as the S&P 500 index. The great thing about these is that it was a stock. It wasn't a mutual fund. It wasn't indexed. It could be directly bought and sold like a stock at any time at a really cheap price. This was a great alternative to mutual funds. Before ETFs, if you wanted to get the same return as the market, you had to pay a company probably somewhere around a half or 1% to run the money to try to get you the same return. Now it's as easy as just buying SPY. And these have options, which is awesome. We're an options trading firm at Maverick, so we absolutely love options on these ETFs. Before we jump into this semiconductor ETF, there was a change that happened in 2021. The underlying index that this one tried to follow was the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, or the SOX Index. In June of 2021, Direxion made the announcement that they were no longer going to be trying to follow that index. They were going to be following the new index of the ICE Semiconductor Index. This here is the ICE Semiconductor Index, ticker symbol I-C-E-S-E-M-I-T. Now this is a basket of stocks that has been put together as an index. You can't buy it, you can't sell it, you can only just watch it. And so they basically are tracking this basket of stocks. If you take a look at the largest positions in there, you'll see lots of names you recognize, Texas Instruments, Broadcom, NVIDIA, Qualcomm. So basically some of the largest semiconductor stocks are going to be in this basket. And to break it down even more, you can see that about 80% of this basket is going to be companies that make semiconductors. The other 20% is going to be the companies that make the equipment to make semiconductors. Now this is an index, you cannot buy it or sell it. So in order to trade it, you have to find an ETF. So if you take the ticker symbol, the ICE, S-E-M-I-T, and you say, I'm looking for an ETF, but I wanna get some leverage. I wanna get three times the return. You take that times three, and that's going to give you the S-O-X-L. The S-O-X-L is the Direxion, Daily Semiconductor 3X Bullish ETF. Direxion is the company that controls this ETF. And remember, you can buy this directly and their job is to try to get this symbol, this XOXL symbol, to follow the ICE Semiconductor Index as closely as possible times three. The way they do that, they go long and short stock, they buy derivatives, futures, options, contracts. They're basically trying to get three times the return of this index. If we take a look at them side by side, on the left is the ICE SEMIT, on the right is the SOXL, and you can see they generally move together in lockstep. When one is going down, the other is going down as well. When one goes up, the other goes up. Now the one thing you won't notice is that the chart on the right is moving three times greater in percentage. The scaling adjusts for that, so you're not going to see it, but we'll see it when we take a look at some more examples. Let's talk about the ways to trade SOXL. One of the ways we like is very simple, just for a short-term trade. So a couple days, a couple hours, maybe, maybe a week or two at the most, you can use SOXL just like a stock. So again, this is going to be directional trading. You wanna trade off of direction, not like options where we can choose other things. You're just looking at Delta. Is it going up? Is it going down? Now, of course, we are looking at this one. This is the long bullish 3X ETF. So we only want to buy this one. We don't want to sell it short. We would go long the inverse SOXS, which is the short 3X semiconductor ETF. So we really just want to be buying these things and using them like a stock. Let's take an example of that. 
Let's look at a short-term trade on the SOXL. I'm going to be using the bar replay feature in TradingView. It is an awesome, awesome system. You basically come up here. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a little bit shorter term. This is a daily chart. Let's go to a one hour chart. Let's do a little shorter term trade in this example. And I'm gonna to go to the replay button. Now the replay button, what it does, it makes it to where I can go back at any random period of time. So what I like to do is I like to just stretch this chart out and I wanna make this as random as possible. Where I'm literally just clicking at a point in time. Once I've clicked at that point of time, it only shows me what happened to the left. I no longer get to see what happens to the right. So as close to real time trading as you can possibly get. Right here at this period of time, I have no desire to buy this. We are big trend followers at Maverick. We believe in the trend is your friend. All the research supports a trader's edge by using this. So what we wanna see is we wanna see a stock that's trading above its moving averages. So the red line here is a 20 period moving average. The yellow line here is a 50. They're both going down and the stock is trading below it. So until this stock gets above these two lines and these two lines start to move higher, I have no desire to be long this simple whatsoever. So let's just let it move around. And again, using the bar replay feature, I've got this pause button, play button, it's awesome. So until we start to get an uptrend, I have no desire to be long this symbol. As you can see right here, now the moving averages are flat. So it's basically saying it's not going anywhere. I only want to be long when I'm seeing some momentum to the upside. Until that happens, I'm just not interested. So we can let this thing run. And here's a great thing about trading. You just be patient and let it run. Now at some point, we're going to get a time where the stock actually has some upside momentum. And here we go. Here we go. We got it right here. So for the first time in a very long time, we've got a few things that have happened. We are trading above the two moving averages. The 20 period moving average has crossed above the 50. And we actually just broke out of a fairly major bit of resistance here. And we do have some more resistance up here. We'd have to go back in the chart to see where our resistance is. But this right here checks all the boxes. Again, I'm doing this trade very quickly. Trust me, I would do much more research on stuff. But let's go ahead and just simulate a trade. So the stock right here is at 2347. That is the market price. So let's go ahead and put in a buy at 23.47. And look, every single trade needs a protective order. Now we're going to use a stop order. That is like the most basic order. We don't love stop orders at Maverick. We're an options trading firm. There's so many more sophisticated ways to do a protective order. But for the sake of this example, let's do this. Um, and I'm gonna put in a stop order and I'm going to put it right below the 50 period. I'm going to put it below the 20 period moving average. So the red line. So right now the stop is going to be at about $20 and 25 cents. $20 and 25 cents. There we go. Now we love a trailing stop at Maverick. Basically the trailing stop says we're going to let the stock tell us when to sell. We're not going to decide to sell. We're not going to have a limit order out there because look, we have no idea where this stock is going to go. It could fail immediately. And if it fails immediately, we've got our stop in at 2025. This thing could run for days. We don't know what it's going to be. So using a trailing stop, you can let your trade run. So basically, as long as it doesn't go below this red line, this 20 period moving average, we're very happy to stay in it. Let's see what happens. All right, so at this point, we have moved up our stop and we got stopped out. It did trade below that point. And you can see that's at about 22.90. Okay, so it didn't develop. We, we had a good entry. We thought it was gonna go. It hit this resistance, pull back too deep. Okay, we got stopped out for a small loss. Now look, that is trading. That's what happens. We move on to the next one. Eventually, we're going to get one that runs for three or four days. And using that trailing stop will get you a lot of great, great gains. As you can see, we're simply trading this like any stock. Okay, so as you can see, we trade these like a stock. However, let's talk about some of the risks. There is what's called the return differential. On all of these ETFs, not just the 3X ETFs, but all ETFs, there is what's called a return differential. What it means is that you're not getting exactly the same thing when you're trading the ETF. Let's go through an example here. I pulled the monthly returns for the SOXL ETF. 
you can see on the right, this is the monthly return. Now, what I want to do is I want to compare this to the monthly return of the ICE Semiconductor Index, which I've got right here. In this column, this is the monthly return of the ICE Semiconductor Index. And over here, we have the monthly return of the SOXL. Now, quickly math, you'd say, okay, well, this is easy. But the SOXL should return three times whatever this was. So if you take this times three, uh, you can see it does not equal the same. And there was actually a positive return differential. So you actually got paid a little bit more if you were long the SOXL than you should have. It was like times 3.3, 3.4. You can see a little bit of a return differential. But then you can see in September, it went down 10%. You say, oh, this is easy math. The SOXL went down 30%. No, it didn't. It went down 37%. All of a sudden, a lot worse than it should have. You can see some months they get it right. July was a good month. But take a look at this one. March of 2022. You've got 1%. So the semiconductor index went up 1% and you lost 5% if you were long the SOXL. This is called the return differential. Remember, Direxion is trying to get 3x return of the underlying index. They don't always get it right. Now, this one isn't bad. We cover a lot of ETFs in our ETF series, and there's some of them that are so bad, we say, don't ever trade these. These are complete and utter garbage. This one's not that bad. This was in the realm of reasonable. They're trying to get it, and they're getting fairly close most of the months. But you have to be aware of the return differential because what's going to happen is over the long haul, you're going to get times 2.7 when you're right and lose 3.3 when you're wrong. All of a sudden, you see how if you were 50-50 as a trader, you'd actually have a loss because you were trading these 3x ETFs. And because of the differential, it cut into your profitability. So the longer you hold these ETFs, the bigger the differential gets. And if you hold these for years, the, the differentials are enormous. So they're really, really bad for holding long term. We like them as short-term trades. They always have higher fees. This one is not that bad when you compare it to the 1X ETF, the SOXX, that has a fee of 0.4%. This one's 0.89%. But that always cuts into your return as well. The other thing, there is no options benefit. And that's really what I want to talk about next is options trading. Now, options trading, we are an options trading firm at Maverick. We love options. And we love options on ETFs but we don't like them on 3X ETFs because the options market is smart. If it knows that this symbol is going to move three times as much as a 1X ETF, it simply makes the options three times more expensive. The difference is though, there's not a lot of options trading on these 3X ETFs, so the spreads are wide, liquidity is not good. It's going to be more expensive for you to trade the 3X ETF options, which are three times more expensive than for you to trade the 1X ETF that is less expensive. So other than a cover call, a cover call, I can see someone buying the stock, selling a call. Okay, other than that, if you're looking to buy a call, buy a put, do a vertical spread, horizontal spread, whatever you're looking to do, all options trading should be done either on the SOXX or the SMH. Now, usually we say do it on one, but these are basically the same. They have about the same amount of volume, same amount of volume in the options. So it really doesn't matter which one you choose here on the semiconductor ETF. We like these 3X ETFs for short-term directional trading, just like a stock. We do not like them for options trading. Just use the 1X ETFs. But here's where I think the best use of these products are, in hedging. It's a great way to use for hedging. So let's go through an example of how someone could use SOXL as a hedge. So let's say that there's somebody who's a trader and they are short semiconductor stocks. They're short. They think that the semiconductor sector is going to go lower. So they have 60,000 short of semiconductor stocks. Maybe it's just one, maybe it's a basket of them. And let's say that something happens and they say, hey, you know, I think there's going to be a run higher in semiconductors and it's going to hurt my short position. And I don't want to get out of my short position yet because everyone has different reasons, different time frames. But right here, right now, they say, hey, I don't want to be short semis, but I don't want to get out of my position. So this is where they can just use a hedge and they could just go buy $20,000 worth of SOXL. This is the 3X long ETF. So let's say the semiconductors shoot up 10%. Now, 10% run in semiconductors should probably hurt this person who is short about 
10% or $6,000. However, if they're long $20,000 worth of XOXL, that XOXL is going to go up around 30%, and that's going to mean that they don't lose any money even though their stocks went against them. These are great ways to use these. If you have stock portfolios, great way to use these as a short-term hedge when you don't like how the market is working again. And before I let you go, we got to talk about the number one risk, position sizing. Because of the three times leverage, these things can be very dangerous. When I broke down the monthly returns of the SOXL, there was one month in there where the SOXL lost 50%. Now, if you had too much of your portfolio in that one and you let it get away from you, you could potentially lose half in a month of your portfolio. Some of these ETFs have moved 95% in a month against you. If you don't position size correctly, you're playing with fire. So always, always respect these. You need to understand that this is the only control you have in the market. The market's a wild animal. You have no control. What you do have control over is how much risk you take. And that's absolutely under your control. So understand that these things can move 30, 40, 50% in days, if not a day. We've seen it. It happens all the time. Be very, very cautious. To wrap this up, we like them for short-term trading. Intraday, a couple days, a week or two at the most, no longer than that. All of a sudden, now the differentials really kick in. If you're looking to do options trading, just do it on the 1X ETF. Way tighter spreads. It's the same trade, but you're going to have much less costs. And hedging. Hedging is a great way to use these 3X ETFs. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This is the SOXL. Everyone take care and goodbye.